shows different things. You have time here. So here is the end of the sprint. It may have several weeks, one, two, three, four weeks of the sprint. And what this curve shows is how much remaining time we have to do the work. And you usually, as a development team, you also notice how much remaining work. And then on a daily basis, we burn down, we check how much is remaining. If the amount of remaining work is below the blue line, then we usually say we're on track. And if not, if it starts looking like this, that may be a signal that now it doesn't look that good. It looks like we may have this much work left when the sprint has come to an end. So we are not on track. We may need to do something about our situation here or here or here, but not wait for this long. So this is for the convenience of the, of the developers of the development team to help them visualize for their own purpose, how are we doing in the sprint? If it goes very well for us, it may look like this. And then at a certain point, we may believe that, wow, it looks like we're gonna finish before the sprint has come to an end. So then we have an option. How should we use the time remaining at, towards the end of the sprint? There are several option, optional uh, answers here, several possible good answers for the developers. Um, any suggestions? What could they use this? amount of time because we never make the sprint shorter. We always keep the sprint length. If they're able to finish what they brought in, how can they use the remaining time of the sprint? Any suggestions? Okay. And if we do that, if we do that here, that means that the remaining amount of work increases, of course. That's a possible answer. We could also use this to look ahead do some product backdoor refinement or work on um, improvement proposals that we have identified before. So there are different options. We may later on talk about the options here as well. So sprint burn on short, totally up to the developers to decide if they should use it or not. If you are the product owner, you may decide to um, plan for a release covering not one, but two or three or four sprints. So here, this is sprint one, this is sprint two, sprint three, sprint four. If you do plan for a release, you probably have a scope in mind for that release. And of course, when you start out, this much is remaining, when you finish, and this is supposed to be a straight line, um, you shouldn't have anything remaining. And what you could do is check, okay, how much is remaining after the first sprint? If it looks like this, only that is remaining, then we're on the right track. If it looks like this, after the second sprint, we're still on the right track. This is good for the product owner. Sometimes, however, we, identify new things that we believe are good to add to a release. And if it looks like this, now if we extrapolate, it looks like maybe we'll need another sprint. Or as a product owner, I say, well, then all of what we had from the beginning plus the additional is not possible to finish. So I just cut from the bottom of my product backlog. So I release something here, the most valuable things that we have done, and maybe we work another sprint to do the rest. These are the kind of questions that the product owner may get answers to or ask himself or herself when having a release plan and using a release burn down chart. So um, this is optional. It's totally up to the product owner to decide if I should use a release burn on chart or not. And before that, also decide if I should plan for a release or not. Important to remember, we still 
have single individual sprint plannings before this sprint and before that sprint and before that, etc. But we may have a rough plan for covering several sprints. So um, those are a couple of things to add.